This is Hadi Lisha, interventional cardiovascular specialist, going over uh, the percutaneous treatment of a rare uh, complication, bleeding complication, which is a pseudoaneurysm, arterial pseudoaneurysm. Um, a substantial number of these uh, pseudoaneurysm can be treated percutaneously with thrombin injection, like in this case, a complex pseudoaneurysm with multiple pockets. Obviously, the neck of the aneurysm is the most important aspect, and uh, the smaller the neck, the more uh, amenable to percutaneous closure. As you see here, the angiogram is performed with an up and over technique. Uh, a runoff is performed at baseline to make sure uh, we have a very clear uh, idea of the anatomy. In this case, we decided to place a filter distal to the area that will be injected. And the stopcock technique uh, allows the operator to place the micropuncture needle and then inject a little bit of saline uh, under ultrasound to confirm uh, the position of the needle, then switch to the thrombin uh, whenever uh, it is felt uh, to be appropriate. Now, uh, the thrombin dilution is very important. Um, I prefer the more diluted uh, thrombin injection. Usually uh, most valves comes in 5,000 units with uh, their own five milliliters of saline, which uh, with the mix uh, leading to 1,000 units per uh, cc. But uh, I usually like to dilute it even with another nine milliliters of uh, saline uh, leading to 100 units per cc. There are multiple thrombin products on the market. Uh, obviously, depending on what your hospital uh, is supplied, but uh, obviously they're all similar as long as you follow uh, meticulous dilution uh, recommendations. The triangulation method of ultrasound-based um, puncture uh, applies obviously like in any situation, but it is extremely important to imagine the uh, 3D structure uh, by ultrasound and able to get the needle where it's supposed to. Uh, the needle tip, it has to be visualized. It is absolutely a must before the thrombin is injected. Like you see in this case, um, it is usually in a multi-lobed pseudoaneurysm. It is recommended to start with the most superficial uh, uh, cavity and inject it with thrombin. Then uh, this usually leads to the extension of the thrombus into the small little other cavities. But sometimes, like in this case, uh, this did not lead to uh, the closure of the other smaller cavities closer to the native artery. As you see also, it's important to image the actual uh, superficial femoral artery or uh, common femoral artery, wherever the uh, pseudoaneurysm is originating from, uh, to always have it um, in sight, especially with the neck. Here we elected to uh, inflate a balloon up and over in order to increase the safety of the procedure since the needle is approaching the artery into that small cavity that was literally uh, super close to the neck. Uh, so the balloon was inflated to occlude the artery and the needle tip was placed where it is thought to be um, the secondary uh, cavity and then uh, 100 units of thrombin were injected in that small cavity in order to uh, thrombose it. Um, obviously this procedure is very uh, meticulous and any injection should, should be done super slowly. As you see here the large cavity had thrombosed. Um, it is completely free of any color. However, uh, with the thorough evaluation by ultrasound, uh, the lower cavity had not been completely thrombosed. You can still see there is an area at the bottom of the lower cavity that's still connected to the artery and still pulsating. Uh, this is obviously uh, the artery and the connection to that residual pocket, despite a manual compression with the ultrasound probe, um, we uh, initially elected to inflate a balloon in the uh, area that is um, where the pseudoaneurysm is originating, uh, thinking that this just uh, will by itself lead to extension of the thrombus. Uh, as you see here, there is still a residual uh, 
extravasation into a small uh, pseudo aneurysm cavity. Prolonged hemostasis, I'm sorry, uh, prolonged uh, balloon angioplasty for five minutes did not lead to closure of this small cavity, so we had to inject it. In order to know exactly where it is, uh, fluoroscopic guidance with a hemostat was very helpful in order to guide us to where the needle should go by ultrasound. So the fluoroscopic ultrasound coordination is very important. As you see here, the needle tip is exactly where we needed it to be. And uh, we make sure that we're not obviously injecting uh, into the artery. Uh, this led to the complete uh, resolution of the pseudoaneurysm, confirmed by uh, angiogram. And of course, a follow-up uh, runoff angiography confirmed the absence of embolization.